What's up, y'all? Got a banger from Peas World. Let's get straight into it. Do I think that men are shifting to the right politically because women are too misandrous to them? Yes, but no. Maybe. Hear me out. I think that what you would identify as misandry is a negative response that women have to experiencing misogyny on a systemic and interpersonal level. So I want to put that out there first. Because what a lot of men don't understand is that what they're experiencing is a response to sexism. Too many people treat it as a starting point. And this next part is for the boys. I want you all to listen up for a second, right? I want to validate because I've experienced it. I know that experiencing those real and genuine feelings that women have about experiencing misogyny, receiving that can feel hurtful as a man. It can feel hurtful. I'm not denying that. I would never deny that. It's hurt me. I've shed tears over it. It can feel essentializing. It can feel as though people talk about you as though you are intrinsically evil. I understand that. But what you need to understand, what people need to understand, I'm very serious about this part, is that that is a domino. And the first domino is misogyny. It is patriarchal. Mm, it's always your fault. That's why, at the end of the day, it's always your fault systems that oppress women because oppressive systems create resentment in people they create hatred and negative feelings and bitterness in people and that's very understandable and that kind of negative emotion does not always come out in a way that is pro-social in a way that is like super productive and again as a man who's experienced it firsthand i will say that the way that that hurt and trauma that comes from experiencing misogyny the way that, that comes out the way that that lands on men who are like new boys who are like developing their sense of manhood hurts a lot sometimes and is not always super effective. But what I'm seeing missing from a lot of y'all's analysis, pointing at the root cause, too many folks are starting the story at what they call misandry. They're acting as though nothing's going on and women just started hating on them for fun. And what it tells me, at least on a personal level, is that a lot of y'all are not in like genuine, like honest relationships with women. Because you just need to hear how women interact with men and how men treat women and how many stories the average woman has about her interaction with men who understand that there's a lot of material, a lot of material that brings people to this place of resentment. These people are saying liberal men. Bro, what is this guy even talking about? It's like all the woke liberal hit words. <laughs> resentment and this and that, misandry and misogyny. Bro, the patriarchy built the modern world we live in. Everybody should be thankful that men got together and said, hey, you know what? Let's make the world a comfortable place for everybody, men and women included. And it's all for, shut up. Talk about this one's for like the- there's, there's so many things that women have an advantage of. Like if I'm getting mugged in the street, women more than likely will be getting helped and I won't be getting helped. Is that misogyny? Like, like come on, dude. This is absolute BS. To the women, I'm so sorry. To my niece. Pander bears, dude. Stupid. Pander bears. I'm so sorry to my niece. <laughs> what? The modern world is great. <laughs> the lights are running. The water's running. Like, you can get materials. You don't have to hunt for food. Like, what are y'all talking about? You're in, you're in a room with an LED light. And you're talking about uh, you're sorry? Bro, come on. <laughs> My six-year-old niece, who I was fighting for, I'm sorry. I mean, you have to hope he does a good job, right, over the next four years, because it's what we're stuck with. But I am gutted right now. I'm just a little man. But it's a grown man crying on the internet. Are you out of your freaking mind, dude? You would never catch me crying like that on the interwebs. I know the dating scene sucks, but so does getting hurt in an accident. Have you ever found yourself involved in a personal injury case? As an image consultant, I meet a lot of clients who are actually recovering from all sorts of injuries, from car accidents to workplace injuries. And I was actually surprised to see at how many people lose their personal injury cases, which is why I want to talk about Morgan and Morgan, America's largest injury law firm. They specialize in a wide variety of personal injury cases, and they've won thousands of big cases. And if you do end up working with them, 
they're going to fight for the money that you deserve. Just recently, Morgan & Morgan solidified verdicts in Florida for $12 million and $26 million in Philly. That's up to 40 times the highest insurance offer. And I'm telling you, your case could be worth millions. And the best part is, it's all free unless you win your case. Now, if you've also been the victim of a personal injury or a serious accident, you can visit www.forthepeople.com slash Levi, found in the description below, where you can start your free claim today. I don't care what nobody say. That 4B decenter men movement is dumb. <laughs> like, I don't care what nobody say. Like, y'all sound it. dumb. I love it, I love it, I love it. <laughs> I love having some women on our side that are based. This is the way Cass feels too. Like for one, regardless what these men voted for, don't nobody have control over your body but you. I Max. don't care if you're married. I don't care if you're engaged. I don't care what your situation is. If you're not planning for a baby, then you should be on birth control, period. Like, and I understand that things happen, but for the most part, things don't be happening to y'all. Y'all just be irresponsible and y'all don't care about nothing until y'all miserable with a whole bunch of kids. And well, they're I using abortion as a form of birth control. And that's the problem. We, were, we reacted to a clip the other day. This guy, this doctor said he did 1,200 abortions and like probably less than 1% of them were actually from like our word incest or something else. Like most of them, it's just women are like, oops, I got pregnant and got to get rid of it. Like he said he aborted mainly healthy babies. That's that's awful to me. I also feel like y'all need to stop this decenter men and recruiting other women to be bitter with you because you're mad because you don't get a certain type of treatment from dudes because you date men that don't like you. If you can't get no flowers, if you can't get no chocolate, if you can't get no date, if you can't get a certain type of treatment, that means that you're convenient and he don't it. like you. You don't have it. to decenter men. Go find dudes that actually like you, that actually want to give yeah, you. Go get the go get the left leaning guys, the liberal dudes. <laughs> That's what you want, right? The guys that love the blue haired, uh, with the, the blue haired girls with the grandma glasses and the bull nose ring. That's what you want. Go find those guys. Oh, you don't want those guys? That's crazy. <laughs> with certain type of treatment, you know what I'm saying? Like y'all sound crazy, like. And then it's like y'all talking about decenter men. Like who y'all gonna be? Nah. She got the grease out for this one. I can't like wait. Pause. I bro, preach to that girl. Like, I love seeing women that are based on our side. It's great. You, but we're not following. I would say because of the 4B movement, we have a bunch of Mrs. Cleans in the world, but let's be real, they ain't clean. All jokes aside, it is very sad that these women really feel like they have nothing else to offer other than their hair, apparently, and their panan on. Something. <laughs> <Got fired. laughs> oh, all the cue ball women in the in the Doctor Evils. How about no? Thank you, but no thanks. Thing that they did not take account is nobody really wanted to stuff their turkey, so it didn't really hurt anybody. It's very unfortunate that these women do not understand that they were treated like a drive through They're a grab-and-go. Or something that was easy and quick that just quenched or, their Or heart. a come-and-go. <laughs> this girl's cooking. Hunger. And yet, these women walk around like they're hot shit. But the only thing that's really hot is their crotch. Why is their crotch hot? That's what crotch I'm is hot because they got, the, they got the clap, buddy boy. What's going on? That's crazy work. Okay, I, I always knew that you liberal women were unhinged. But I didn't think the mental disorder was going to go this far. Y'all are now shaving your heads. And now I'm seeing recently that y'all are telling other women to unalive their husbands and their boyfriends for voting for Donald Trump. And not only that, you're telling them to call for a divorce and call to end their relationship. Crazy work. But the funny thing is, is the reason why you're always so emotional so y'all can't never catch anything emotional creatures you and that's why i don't ever want y'all to run this country because y'all crazy uh anyway <laughs> again y'all are letting women that are undesirable ain't married the first and don't even have a relationship mm. with men anyway to tell you to leave your husbands and to leave your relationship when they don't even have one of mm. their own to leave why would you listen to somebody like that? That's like listening to a marriage counselor who has never been married. Facts. Y'all do that too. Yeah. Uh -huh. Y'all y'all listen to marriage counselors that has has never been married and can't keep a relationship the first. But that's neither here nor there. Why would y'all listen to these women? Look at them. <laughs> Look, Look at the you. women that's telling y'all to do these things. They look unhinged. They do. I went to a young lady's page, and she's telling people to do all these things. 
And I see she had the white eyebrows drawn on. And I know that's not good to look at people and uh, and judge them. But baby, that's a... We do it all the time here. Mental disorder to me. I don't care what nobody say. Yeah. <laughs> this I like her. She's great. She's she's amazing. Who would think that is, is desirable? Men don't <laughs> like stuff like... Men literally hate stuff like that. So like, true, though. That is a repetitive... Like, chat, let me know. We have a lot of men that watch. Would you rather have a girl that is, has a head like a cue ball? Has shaved eyebrows, the bull nose ring piercing, the grandma glasses, and then like the dyed orange, pink, blue, etc. hair, like the rainbow colored hair. Would you rather have that or would you rather have a girl that has a natural look? Her natural hair, her natural eyelashes, her natural eyebrows, her natural lips, her natural face. What would you rather have? Let, let us know. Natural or the synthetic version? Which one would you rather have? I bet we see a lot of naturals in the chat right now. Let me know in the comments. Helen to them. And y'all sitting up here making it seem like y'all were already desirable to them. Y'all were already invisible. Exactly. Now y'all even more invisible. And I feel like y'all doing this because y'all don't ever get real attention. And this is getting you some attention. This Ooh. is the most attention that y'all have ever got from men. And y'all are eating it up. Y'all love it. Because the, the looks of you guys, ain't nobody even checking for y'all. Not even in a little bit. Mm-mm. That's a mental disorder. There are women on TikTok. Well, and I always equate it to the poisonous frogs, chat. You know what I say. The poisonous frogs in the Amazon, they're always crazy cl colors. And that's what that's what these women do. And they don't even know it. They feel so empowered by it. But what they're doing is they're shooing away all the men that are actually good men. And the men that would actually come in and take care of them, make them a wife. And what's, what's happening now is there's going to be a lot more eligible men that are going to be looking for conservative women because the liberal left-leaning girls are going to be shaving their heads looking like Dr. Evil. How about new? And now, now all the conservative women are going to get all the men, and then they're going to procreate, and then we're going to have more conservative people. It's just like, but they feel empowered. Oh, my God. It's like, God, this is so beautiful. The brainwashing is great. It's doing exactly what we want it to do. And do you know another thing that scares me about this election result? And just stick with me. This is just a theory, but I feel like it's a very valid theory. Okay. I think women are going to be far more cautious about the men that they date and the political views of the men that they date. And I think that when women do date, they're going to be far more cautious when it comes to sex. And I Personally, I think that's a good thing. Stop spreading your legs for every other guy and needing abortions. I think that's a good thing. Am I crazy for that, chat? I think these two things combined is going to perpetuate and accelerate incel culture. These entitled men, or should we call them boys, that feel entitled to women despite having absolutely zero respect for them, are going to feel pissed off and agitated because they can't get the women that they think they're owed. If they couldn't find women who wanted to have sex with them before, it's going to be ten, hundred times more harder now. And I'm I, I actually, I highly doubt that. Talking about quite a specific group here, the 18 to 29 year old white men that voted for Trump. Because that's how 18 to 29 year old white men primarily voted for Trump. So we know that it's more than likely that they already hold misogynistic views. They already see. It's always the buzzwords, the toxic masculinity, the misogyny. I love it. And girls is a piece of meat that they're entitled to because why else would you vote for Trump unless you feel like that? So their content and anger towards women is just going to exasperate. It's the only reason you vote for Trump. <laughs> It's because you have disdain for women. <laughs> Golly. And what happens? They take their rage, they take their anger and their misogyny out on women and girls. Women and girls are put in even more danger. It's these type of men and boys are at risk of becoming the type of men and boys that go and shoot at women in nightclubs or in shopping centres because they feel so enraged by women who won't have sex with them. And I mean, this is just a theory, it's just a fear, but I feel like it is a very valid one. Because if anything's for sure, Trump is not uniting anyone. He's dividing people. And this is another way that society in America is going to see deeper divisions than ever before. Well, let me just say this, right? Uh, I don't really agree with that take. It's a very small subset of men, very small percentage of men that would do something like an atrocity like that. And um, even if it does divide, maybe sometimes we do need, to new do need to divide to figure out who's actually sane and insane. Just I'm going to be very honest and say this. I don't think... The dating interracially is going to be a possibility for me after this election. What? I'm in an interracial relationship. I'm in an interracial marriage, actually. Cass is half black. She's Thai. She's white. And we are doing just fine. What? We're not divested anymore over this? Moving forward, I, I don't foresee that being 
something that I entertain, even in the slightest bit, I don't. Um, was it something that I was like giddy and like gung ho about, you know, attempting as I date right now? No, honestly, no, I'm pro black. I love black men. I love black women. I want a black partner. Right. Well, then there you go. That's what you want. That's your preference. Go for it. I believe that relationships are so hard on their own to then bring in like completely different cultural backgrounds and cultural experiences. Now, it could be different. God forbid somebody doesn't agree with everything that you say. It, this is what I don't get with this whole woke culture is like, like they're looking for someone that aligns with their beliefs 100%. What happened to the good old days? When you could agree to disagree, where it was okay to have different beliefs, but we could still have common ground and be cordial with each other. What happened to that? Do you think me and Cass agree on everything? No, we don't. But that's a part of life. It's part of being an adult. You're not going to agree on everything. Why is somebody just looking for someone that's a direct reflection of all their beliefs and ideologies? That's not healthy. It's an echo chamber. You're never going to have anybody call you out for doing something stupid. you got to have a partner that's going to be able to hold you accountable. Say, hey, you're doing something stupid here. Hey, you said this and you're doing this. If you're just looking for somebody that's just like you, just marry yourself. But we've seen women do that and they still get divorced. <laughs> it's crazy to me. You know, with another person of color, but even after, again, this election, I'm even looking at them a little crazy. I don't necessarily even- Imagine being so emotionally immature that you think an election, and based off some what somebody votes for, dictates their entire personality. All of their morals, all of their beliefs, all of their ethics is off of a political party affiliation. It's, it's just crazy to me. Believe in POC. I am a black woman. First and foremost, I am a black woman. And history is proven. This election is proven. No one is coming to save us but us. And we can't really trust anyone aside from ourselves. So the, the idea of putting myself out there when half of white men, half of white women, 60% of Latinos. We're still waiting for the divesters to come outside. We haven't forgotten. Well, what I don't get is right. these people seem to forget, like, if the majority of people are doing a certain thing and you're in the minority, maybe it's time to do some reflection and say, maybe I'm wrong, but I doubt they're ever going to do that forever. That's what this young right-wing commentator guy posted just as Donald Trump won the US election. We control your bodies. It's your body, my choice. His post blew up and led to thousands of others. And now young kids are even repeating it in school, according to mom's posting about it on TikTok. A 13 year old daughter said that today at school, there were boys everywhere wearing red Trump hats and commenting to the girls, your body, my choice. Your body, my choice forever. And some of the other comments really are talking about women losing further access to their reproductive rights under a Donald Trump presidency. But actually the comments go a lot further, some threatening women with violent sexual assault. So according to some of these comments online, they say they'll be bred willingly or unwillingly Women threatening sex strikes as if you have a choice. Experts across the board are worried about how the threats have escalated and say misogynistic language has been mainstreamed by the Trump campaign. What's crazy to me is that these news outlets are picking up stuff that like controversial podcasters are saying and like that dude is probably trolling. I don't know anything about Nicholas Fuentes, but like I believe women should have the say over what they do with their body. Um, but I think we should have rules and regulations behind it, but that's just what I think. I refuse to participate. Sorry, if you're a man, I will not be responding to you if you are a Oh, man. no, no. You're not going to respond to us? No. <laughs> I was really hoping to get a response on my DM that I sent. I will not be talking to you. I am going to be promoting the 4B movement from here on out. The 4B movement started in South Korea, and it includes women who have given up on men, swearing off dating them, having relationships with them, carrying their children, no hookups, nothing. I've been participating in the 4B movement since um, the summer of 2022. I haven't- Good, get out of the gene pool. Been intimate with any men at all. I haven't been These on- women are gonna, I really feel like this is gonna backfire on them miserably when they get old and they're like in their 30s and they're like, where are all the men? I, I want a man. It's like, well, you were the 4B movement. 
men went and found other women that aligned with their beliefs and more than likely are conservative if they want to have kids and start a family. So it's like, get the liberals out and get the more conservative ones in. On any dates with any men, I haven't entertained a man at all, no situationships. Women are swearing off men, men are threatening women with sexual violence, and this is just a few days after the election. Feminist, reproductive rights advocate... And <laughs> Takes one tweet and says men are... Men are threatening... Like, dude, come on. I love the ladies. I'm married. Like, I I'm pro-relationships. In no way, shape, or form should you do ever do anything like that. Like, I hate that they make these blanket statements and they just expect us to just eat them. And Harris campaign worker Caroline Motley told me this is a scary time to, to be a woman in the U.S. Now that I see that um, this was, as you said, and as I've said, such a tremendous victory for Trump, that there are more of his supporters around us than I even realized. And I want to make sure that myself and the women that I know and love all remain sober-minded about that and keep ourselves safe. And if that means celibacy and if that means swearing off men until they get their act together, then I think that that's fantastic. This message is for the men of the world. I need to tell you as a conservative Christian woman that your masculinity is not toxic. These are the women we're looking for. God-fearing, conservative, Christian women. Let her preach. Let her talk. Our society has been fed a lie, a huge lie, that just because you're a man, you're part of the problem. But I'm here to tell you that that's not true. That's a love. lie from the pit of hell. You deserve love, respect, and appreciation for who you are. And I'm really tired of seeing men shamed for it. In a world that's trying so hard to redefine what it means to be a man, it's crucial to stand firm. Being strong, protective, and decisive, those are all virtues, not vices. You play an irreplaceable role in your families and your communities. And despite what the far left media propaganda narrative might tell you, your contribution is vital. I promise you, not all women feel the way that the media suggests that we do. Many of us, I'd even venture to say most of us, really actually love and appreciate you for who you are. Your masculinity is a gift from God. That's how he made you. And there's nothing wrong with it. So let's break this cycle of negativity and embrace the truth. You are not the problem. Your masculinity is not the problem. And together we can change the narrative. Thank you for listening to my TED Talk. Well, hey, shout out to her, man. Shout out to her. But that's the problem is it's all the women that are the super left-leaning, liberal, blue-haired, grandma glasses, uh, bull nose ring, <laughs> poisonous frog in the Amazon. They're the ones always on social media talking about this stuff. Whereas the conservative women are raising their children. They have other things to freaking worry about. So it's just crazy to me. But it's good to see women out there like Cass is completely based. Super logical. We have a lot of the same beliefs when it comes to reproductive rights, when it comes to, you know, how you should raise children and having a nuclear family and a two-parent household and having discipline, having structure, things like that. Like, that's what we strongly believe in. We go to the gym every day. We take care of Loki. He's a good boy. He knows to go to his place. Free. He knows commands. You know what I mean? Like, structure is a good thing. Loki, go to your place. Like, structure is a really good thing. And you can use it to empower your life, but a lot of people think discipline and structure is a bad thing. Let kids run amok. Let them be free-willed. Let them do whatever they want. No, kids need guidance. They need a two-parent household. They need masculinity and they, they need femininity. They need a man to push them and a woman to nurture them. But we've just really lost our way. And a lot of the media now is just pushing this narrative of be soft, be 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 overtly kind, and, and don't hurt anybody's feelings. Like, bro, hurting your feelings is a part of growth. If you Like, I'm not super religious. I do pray, but like, if you ask... If you ask whatever you believe in God for strength, he's going to give you trials to go through. You're going to ask him for patience. He's going to give you things to be patient with. It's kind of how it is. Go watch The Wizard of Oz. Courage the, courage the Cowardly Lion or whatever his name was. The, the Cowardly Lion. He made him things. He gave him trials to be courageous about. It's like, bro, come on. And maybe I'm ridiculous for thinking this. I don't know. Let me know. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Go cop the two ebooks, The Four Pillars of Personality and The Four Steps to Style. They make you irresistible to women and respected by men. I will see you guys tomorrow, man. Peace.